Uh, winter may be coming to an end, according to my calendar at least. Uh, winter's just about behind us and uh, there's spring in the air, although I know there's snow on the ground in some parts of the country this morning. But perhaps it's just as well uh, because, um, well, power prices are at record highs and will not likely to improve anytime soon. And a lot of people are asking questions about whose fault it is and what is to be done about it. One of those people is uh, Jason Heal from the Maxim Institute. Jason, kia ora. Good morning, Andrew. So who do we blame for this um, <laughs> debacle? Shall we call it a debacle? Let's do that. Yeah, crisis, I feel, uh, okay. gets overused. It does. So let's, the debacle is... Um, it's the new crisis. That's one I haven't heard before. It's great. Yeah. We'll make it... <laughs> debacle from now on that's okay. my word of choice yeah okay uh, so easy i suppose to to blame uh the uh, the retailers those that set the prices or even more so the um the so-called gen tailors who not only sell electricity but generate it and uh, well obviously not enough of it this year which is good news for their profit margins yeah, it's um, it's always an interesting thing for me that Jen Taylor they they generate it and then they sell it to themselves and then they sell it to us and so I I I, I don't understand that whole market um, way of uh, they've called it an oligopoly I think uh, some people have called it and I that's the first time I heard that word as well I had to look that up and um, do the Russians yeah, people own say our power? That, I mean that's, that's that sounds scary doesn't it anyway it I interrupted. <laughs> No, it's all good, mate. They um, uh, people people have said uh, that they're acting like cartels and uh, they're doing price gouging and and things like that. Um, I don't know if it's fully there to blame. I think we we often think that our oh, government intervention is the is the solution, regulation is the solution. I think. Um, for me, I tend to look further afield. I'm I'm very interested in geopolitics um, and. Um, foreign policy and how the world is interacting um, with each other and what yep. effects that has on New Zealand. And so I, I looked a bit wider for this and I, I think that part of the problem is we just don't have enough local power um, generated that we rely quite heavily on uh, imports. Um, I think 80, almost 80% 80 of our petroleum is imported. Mm -hmm. um, even the stuff that we do um, get out of the ground here. We don't have anywhere to refine it, so we send it overseas to get refined and then we bring it back again. Um, our, our gas, we're, we're talking about maybe importing um, liquid natural gas, but we'd need to build somewhere to process that because it has to be cooled and then heated back up again and then piped around the country. Yeah. Um, so I think a lot of it comes down to our lack of self-sufficiency when it comes to generating um, i mean we have we have great natural resources that where we could generate l like our whole power grid could be powered by ourselves but yep. then the power grid itself is another issue as well i mean we were told uh you remember in may we were told please don't charge your phones uh, between 7 a.m and 9 a.m this morning please don't use the heaters on what was then the coldest day of the year because yep. Um, the power might just turn off <laughs> if we use too much of it. So the power grid's another another issue as well, um, yeah. infrastructure and things like that. Just on, on this one, though, because, I mean, you, you make a good point. You know, there's, there's things that are outside of our control and there's wars happening in different places and there's all sorts mm. of problems with, uh, with freighting things around the world. But in terms of electricity supply... Most of what, I mean, we're not importing or exporting electricity, right? We, we either make it or it's not there. Yes, we import perhaps fossil fuels, which we can use to generate electricity. Mm. But isn't that the way of the past? Aren't we throwing out our fossil fuels and it's a, it's a bold new green future and, and, you know, it's all solar and wind power and, and this is the bold new world that we've inherited? Because a lot of people bought e-cars at discount under the last government and and they they don't care about petrol they care about where they can charge their tesla yeah that's uh that's true we are um transitioning to i think we have the uh the goal of being um 100 um 
uh, renewable energy generation by 2050 or, yep. or something like that. Um, and we're well on our way there. I think 80% of our um, power is generated by um, renewable sources. So that's mostly hydro. I think our yep. hydro electricity generation is about 55% of our electricity generation. Um, and it's it's been as high as uh, 80%, I think, in the early 80s. Um, and uh, then the rest of it is solar and wind. Um, or geothermal is another big one that yep. we have as well, um, which is uh, a renewable, uh, green, clean energy. Uh, but we also, uh, the rest of that, so the, what is that, 24, 14%, yes. so my maths well, is terrible, well 14% done. of whatever is is um, power generated by coal and gas and oil. So... Um, Part, another part of the problem is that the parts for wind farms and solar farms are all manufactured overseas. They're all imported here. Um, and the way that the world is kind of shaking out the fragmentation that's happening around the world at the moment means that those parts may be harder and harder to come by. Mm -hmm. We've kind of also capped our hydroelectricity. We could build more dams, we could, um, you know, put more generation plants on rivers and things like that. But we, we don't really want to damage the environment in that way. I mean, you dam up a river and you, you destroy a whole yeah. um, ecosystem. And so we don't, we, we've decided we don't want to do that. So we kind of tapped out in that sense. Um, so uh, unless we generate or manufacture our own um parts for solar and wind, which even then we don't have the raw materials to do that. Yeah. Um, I think we need to, uh, the other option is is battery technology. Mm -hmm. um, so energy storage so that we could turn on the batteries when the sun's not shining or the wind's not blowing or, yeah. or the lakes like they are at the moment. I think they're below 50% level, our hydro lakes. So we, we need some other way to, to quickly turn on power. So you, you can't just you know, turn on, you can just turn on the switch at the coal plant and, you know, fire it up and it will go. But, yeah. but um, uh, green energy is a lot more intermittent than that. So we need some option where we can have a switch that we turn on when we need it. I know you, um, you're a big fan of geopolitics and, and reluctant to blame the government. But I mean, this is this is a low hanging fruit here, Jason, because uh, we did have a system. I mean, as you mentioned, uh, power prices are high, lake levels are low, and there's a causal link between that. Oh, gosh, there's less electricity than we thought because we haven't built any dams. Looks like we'll have to put the price up. It, yeah, I mean, OK, whether or not that's a conspiracy, uh, <laughs> the, the last government said, you know what, we're not going to look for oil and gas yeah. anymore. We're going to pull the plug yeah. on that. Uh, so we are more reliant on hydro with low lake levels than we were before that policy was enacted. Some mm. of the situation that we're in is a direct result of a pre previous government a policy, uh, but that's, you know, that's, that's an easy cat to kick, as it were. Uh, that's, ha yeah, having that's said right. that, the, 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 um, rather than finding somebody to blame, the solution probably is gonna cost billions of dollars and is gonna, um, involve planning ahead. Meanwhile, our electricity prices are twice what they should be. That's right. I mean, there's there's two levels to our um, our problem right now. One is the immediate problem that we don't have enough electricity. Yeah. And the other is, well, how are we going to mitigate mitigate against this in, in years to come? So the CEO of Contact Energy notes that we probably need at least 20 big power plants in, by 2035. Wow. Uh, it takes about six years to build one and bring it online. So we need to kind of get started now. Can I just um, can I just uh, intervene there? It takes about yeah. six years once you've jumped through all the planning hoops. That's right. Which yeah. takes about yeah. 20 years. And even if you jump through all of them, uh, they'll pull the plug at the last minute, literally in this case, lug it. Anyone? Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> That's right. And, and I think... Um, uh, opening up oil and gas exploration, I think there's an estimated 600 million barrels of oil in the ground around New Zealand um, that we could take advantage of. But then again, also, you'd have to bring the Marsden Point refinery back online because it was taken offline in 2021. So yeah. it just imports or um, petroleum. It doesn't actually process it. So there's a whole bunch of things that need to happen. Um, and I think, you know, people get concerned, well, what about 
you know, we're, we're producing more carbon. You can you can mitigate that. There's there's um, carbon sinks. There's carbon capture technology, which is which is a big thing. There's look even looking into high um, hydrogen. Um, uh, a hydrogen-based economy rather than a petroleum-based one is, is yep. something that, that we could do. And, and hey, uh, a cleaner, greener world is fantastic. In the meantime, let's not turn off the tap to fossil fuels whilst old people can't turn their heaters on. You know, I mean, yeah. let's... Yeah. Let's, no, that's right. Yeah. And there is, to be honest, there is a, a causal link between energy security and economic security and... Uh, care for the environment. Yeah. So the less people have to worry about heating and where their next meal is going to come from, yeah. and and you know spending all day building a fire to to cook their meals, um, or to heat their house, the more they are concerned about the environment around them, the more care they have for for the creation around them. So it is important that energy security. Um, is is there that yeah. we are we know that when we turn the plug on at the wall power is going to come out and we can heat our homes we can cook our food we can um look after our our, our families mm, yeah exactly and and hey if um if we're freezing to death and we can't care for our families we're going to chop down the last tree and hunt the last mower basically exactly yeah, yeah, exactly yeah. yeah that's right uh now mm. i mean this is a, a complicated issue uh and yeah i think it's it's too easy to play the political game and uh for one government to blame the previous one and then vice versa because these are such long-term issues but hey in the meantime uh the uh, the power companies seem to be making record profits um but but hey uh winter's coming to an end come on summer and then we'll probably yeah. have to crank up our air conditioning units right yeah that's right yeah yeah and we'll all be complaining about the heat and going oh is there not enough power to cool me down yeah exactly. uh, i think um what we need is uh, is some long-term planning but that's hard when you have a three-year election cycle yeah. and it's six years i mean it's it's just six years to build a power plant so three you, you don't even have one government that can say we're going to build a certain amount of power plants by the time the next election comes around because it just doesn't you just can't do it so there has to be longer term strategy around our energy self sufficiency otherwise we're just going to be at the at the whims of whoever is controlling the shipping lanes and whoever we have to get our raw materials from so um yeah we just definitely need to think ahead no hey thanks uh, so much for your insight on this now uh this conversation part of an article going to be published on the maxim website uh, a little bit later this week maxim.org.nz jason thanks for your thoughts thanks for joining us thanks for having me mate hey thanks very much for joining us in the rima studio thanks very much for watching the interview it's kind of nice to have an audience actually and if you did like what you watched then do give us a like, do give us the thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more interviews like that one, or perhaps even better, subscribe and those interviews will come straight to you. Don't forget to turn on your notifications and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.